Hi guys! So in this video, I'm going to be describing some of the key nutrients that are going to help boost our immune system, as well as the foods that contain those nutrients, and then a few simple, super easy recipes using those foods. Now when I say boost our immune system, I do not mean revving it up because that's something that we actually do not want. We do not want an overactive immune system because that actually causes adverse health effects. But rather, this video is meant to show you guys the nutrients that are supporting our immune system so that it can function as it should. Let's get started. So the first nutrient that I'm going to be talking about is vitamin C. Now vitamin C is important to the immune system because it promotes the activity of phagocyte cells. And those are the types of cells that include many of our white blood cells. In our immune system, they help to eat or destroy the foreign um, particles or the foreign cells, which could be bacteria and viruses. So for many of us, when we think of vitamin C, we think oranges. And that's actually a very fair thought. One medium orange, it can give us 78 to 93 percent of our daily vitamin C needs. But I think that we're really leaving out some key players here because there's so many other foods that contain vitamin C. Bell peppers, grapefruits, um, kiwis, strawberries, and broccoli. So the recipe that I'll be showing you guys today includes vitamin C rich bell peppers and that recipe is going to be one pan chicken fajitas. You're going to need three bell peppers and don't be afraid to mix different colors. One onion, spices including chili powder, paprika, ground cumin and oregano, four cloves garlic, two skinless boneless chicken breasts, oil and salt and pepper to taste. Start by cutting the bell pepper lengthwise first, then take out the part with the seeds and stem. Then, cut the pepper into thin slices. Do this with every pepper. Next, peel the garlic cloves. If you find it tough to peel, smash it with the flat end of the knife first and it will come off a little bit easier. Next, cut the chicken breasts into slices as well, similar to the shape and size of the bell pepper slices. Next, mince the garlic by first slicing them and then dicing them so that they are in small pieces. Place a piece of parchment paper over a pan to prevent sticking. Whoa, <laughs> now that's an alliteration. Um, anyway, this way we don't have to use as much oil. Next, place the veggies, the chicken, the garlic, and onion, which I forgot to mention earlier to cut into slices as well, on the pan. Squeeze half a lemon's worth of juice on top and go in with your spices. I recommend at least one tablespoon of chili powder and half a tablespoon each of cumin, oregano, and paprika. Also, add salt and pepper to your taste as well and drizzle two tablespoons of olive oil on top. Mix everything well, or you could also have everything mixed together in a large bowl first and then transfer it to the pan. Bake at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for 25 minutes or until the chicken is fully cooked and the vegetables are crisp yet tender. So the next nutrient is vitamin A. Vitamin A, yes, it's amazing for our eyes, but it also helps us to develop our immune system and protect us against infections by helping us keep um, the skin and tissues in our mouth and our respiratory system healthy. So foods that contain a high amount of vitamin A include carrots, sweet potatoes, cooked spinach, and butternut squash and pumpkin and also chicken liver. I, I love chicken liver, but I have a strong suspicion that um, a lot of you out there probably don't like it as much as I do. So the recipe that I'm gonna be showing you guys is gonna be sweet and sour sauteed carrots. For vitamin A that's gonna be coming from plant sources like carrots, it will be better absorbed um, when you eat it or cook it with a source of fats because vitamin A is a fat soluble vitamin. So that's why these carrots are gonna be sauteed. You will need two to three large carrots, depending on how much you want to make, a bit of ginger, white vinegar, sugar, and a bit of green onion. Start by peeling the carrots and chopping off the ends. Cut three small thin slices of ginger and finely mince them. Yes, that is all that you're gonna need. The carrots will then be julienned or cut into thin matchsticks, and the way to do that is to first cut the carrot diagonally so that you get flat slices and try to cut them thinly. Next, stack up these slices, lay them on their flat side, and cut lengthwise so that they come out as thin little matchsticks. Do this for all the carrots that you want to cook. They should turn out something like this in the end. You will also just need a small bit of the white portion of the green onion as well as a bit of the green portion and roughly chop them. Turn the heat to high, add oil, Swirl the oil around the pan and wait till the pan gets hot. Once it gets hot, 
Add first the ginger and saute for about 10 seconds. Then add the green onion and saute for another 10 seconds. Then add the carrots and saute until they start to become soft, which might take around three to five minutes. Add one tablespoon of vinegar, salt, and sugar to taste. Then saute for another five minutes or until the carrots are soft or at the texture that you like it. Transfer onto a plate or a bowl and serve. So next is vitamin E. Vitamin E is an antioxidant and it also regulates our immune system by interacting with the key players of that immune system. Now that being said, vitamin E deficiency is not really something you should be worrying about because it is a very rare, but it's still good to include regularly foods that contain vitamin E, such as toasted almonds, um, toasted sunflower seeds, almond butter, peanut butter, and avocados as well. For example, you can have a snack with a handful of toasted almonds and then pair that with a fruit, such as strawberries, which if you remember from the beginning of the video, strawberries pack a powerful vitamin C punch. So the final nutrient that I'll be talking about today is zinc. Now zinc is a mineral and is responsible for the proper functioning of the cells of the immune system and can be found in various types of foods. For example, whole grains, poultry, meats, seafood, milk, beans, pumpkin seeds, cashews, as well as hemp hearts. So that's why the final recipe today is going to be using the lean ground meats as well as kidney beans in order to make a hearty zinc rich chili. You will need three to four ounces of lean ground pork or beef, one 19 ounce can of beans, any type will work. And while I couldn't get them when I got these kidney beans, I do recommend that you get the ones that have no salt added. If you do buy the regular ones, simply rinse them to reduce the excess salt. You will need one can of diced tomatoes. This is about a 700 milliliters or so can. Um, it's also no salt added, but if you wanna find one where they add extra spices, feel free to also use that. Grab one bell pepper, whatever color you like, one zucchini, four cloves garlic, one medium onion, and let's welcome back our spices, chili powder, cumin, and oregano, and of course, salt and pepper to taste. So exactly like the chicken fajitas, first cut the bell pepper in half, get rid of the seeds and the stem and cut into thin slices. This time though, dice them up into small pieces. For the zucchini, cut off the ends, then dice them into small pieces however you like. With the onion, cut in half, cut the halves into slices, and then dice them. For the garlic, again, slice them first, then mince finely. Here you can see all my ingredients prepped and ready to go beside me. Turn the stove to high heat, add oil, and when the pan is hot, add the ground meat and cook until it's almost done, which should take about two to three minutes. Add the onions first, as well as the bell pepper, because we really want to let out the flavor and the aroma of the onions, and plus these two veggies take a little bit longer to cook. Saute them for about three minutes. When the onions and bell pepper start to get soft, add the zucchini and the garlic and saute for another two minutes. Then add the diced tomato plus the juice, the beans, and all the spices. The amount is to your liking, but again, I do recommend at least one tablespoon of chili powder and at least half a tablespoon of oregano and cumin. I do always tend to add more of the cumin though. If the broth is too thick, add one to two cups of water. Don't worry, this will boil down as we simmer it. Turn down the heat to medium and cover and let simmer for about 25 minutes or until the veggies are at a consistency that you like and it becomes more stew-like and not so brothy. Serve and garnish with chopped green onions if you wish. For all of these nutrients mentioned today, it's very important to know that you should be getting these through food as much as you are able to, because there's really not much evidence that taking more of these nutrients in you know larger amounts than you need than you can get from a healthy balanced diet would be helpful towards your immune system. In fact, some of these nutrients, for example, vitamin A and vitamin E, if you take too much 
through supplemental form, then that can actually really create negative health effects. So of course, beyond food, there are a couple other ways that we can help to support our immune system. And number one is having a positive mental attitude. So chronic stress leads to a high level of a compound called cortisol in our bodies. Now, our response to stress um, by releasing cortisol is completely natural. It's meant to help our bodies through this tough time. But with chronic stress level, then cortisol actually suppresses our immune system. So managing stress is really one of the key factors in um, how we can support our immune system. Another way to help support our immune system is if we can get regular exercise up to 30 to 45 minutes daily. This amount of regular exercise, especially when it's done at a moderate intensity, is really beneficial for our immune system um, and even more so in older adults as well as if you have some sort of chronic condition. And even if you do have to split them up, exercising in bouts of 10 minutes or more so you can reach those 30 to 45 minutes, I encourage you to do so. Take a walk outside, walk your dog, um, look at YouTube videos online, that's really what I do a lot of the time. The third way that we can help to support our immune system is to get enough sleep. Sleep deprivation is something that can reduce the number and activity of the cells that combat viruses and bacteria. So really focus on getting that good nighttime routine so that you can go to sleep at a time where you are able to give yourself at least seven hours of sleep. And finally, of course, make sure to limit your exposure to any bacteria or viruses by making sure to wash your hands regularly with soap and warm water, lather for at least 20 seconds, and make sure, of course, to avoid touching areas where you can introduce bacteria into your bodies. So those are mainly the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. So I hope you guys really enjoyed these recipes in this video and I hope you're using this information in order to eat healthfully and developing those habits in order to support your immune system. And I will see you guys very soon.